How many people still believe that Jesus is the king? It doesn't matter who gets voted into office, that Jesus is still on the throne and our hope is with him. Let's pray and let's get into the word. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the word that's going to go forth. We ask, Lord, that you will transform us and change us from the inside out. In Jesus' name, amen. Do me a favor. Go to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. And then when you get that, we're also going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. We want to thank you for tuning in online today. Uh, and I believe God has a good word for us. 1 Peter chapter 2, when you get it, say word. word. Say, I'm still trying to find it. <laughs> First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it reads, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. I like that verse. Let me just read it again, just for me. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 20 says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As we continue our series, living life God's way, dealing with the kingdom of God, today I want to talk about kingdom ambassadors. Kingdom ambassadors ambassadors. What is an ambassador in the kingdom of God? Over the last several weeks, we've been in this series dealing with the kingdom of God. The kingdom is the rule and reign of Jesus Christ on earth as it is in heaven. It is God's government extended through his kingdom citizens to bring the culture of heaven on earth. The problem is, a lot of us, we were colonized and we took cues from the world. The way we were raised, the way our mother, our father has taught us, and the way that entertainment or TV has taught us, that's why we got our cues from our relationships or how we are supposed to respond to one another, how we're supposed to spend our finances. But that's why Jesus comes on the scene and he says, repent, for the kingdom of God is near. In other words, the way you were thinking was wrong. So therefore, you need to change your mind and follow the king's way. We've been talking about it. There's several ways that we can conduct ourselves. Number one, we can follow the way of the world. The world tells us what to do and how to respond to situations. It tells you when someone gets on your nerves how you're supposed to respond. In other words, if they do something to you, you definitely need to get them back. That's the world's way. Then there's the church's way. And, and sometimes we got to be careful because when you get saved and have a relationship with Jesus, we know more about church than him. We know church etiquette. We know when to stand up and sit down. We know when to clap on cue, but we don't know exactly what Jesus is telling us to do. That's why even in church, we won't say hello to our neighbor who has a disagreement. And then there's the king's way. The king's way is not asking for your opinion. He's not looking for your vote. He's already founded the Constitution, and the only one who can reverse his word is him, but he won't do it. And so the question today is, are we following the world's way, the church's way, or the king's way? And in our text today and in our series, we've been talking about living life God's way, the kingdom agenda. First Peter, Peter, you know Peter, the one who denied Jesus three times. But now Peter, he's writing to this group of people who are exiled because of persecution. Uh, if that was my assignment today, I'd park right there because maybe in this pandemic season, you deny Jesus or you shrunk back a little bit, but it doesn't mean that God will not use you. He still used Peter despite those times where he just denied himself from God. But it says in 1 Peter chapter 1, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, exiles scattered. Peter now is writing to a group of people who are now scattered because of persecution, and he calls them exiles. In other words, 
this is not your permanent residence. You're a kingdom citizen. You don't belong here. And they were exiled because of persecution. And as a result, they're not meeting together anymore. They are scattered all over the place. And a lot of us right now, because of COVID-19, we're not meeting together. We are exiles. But he's telling them, look, just because you're not here together, it should not affect your behavior or your belief. No matter what happens in a pandemic or when the next round of pandemics come, I don't know, but there's probably something around the corner. He says, although you're going through a difficult time, it should not change your conduct or your belief or your behavior. But tests have a way of showing our true selves, right? See, it's easy to be a Christian when things are going well. But it's hard to be a Christian when we're faced with adversity. And so Peter now is talking to these exiles and he's telling them that, that you still need to have a strong relationship with Jesus. He says, now you are living stones. In other words, there was a time you was a dead stone. Now you're a living stone. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. So what he's saying is the presence of God doesn't dwell in a building. It dwells in people because we are a living stone. In other words, there are some things that we can do on our own, in our own homes. But when we come together, God dwells among us and he wants to have his way. But then he goes on and he talks about this whole idea that we're living stones. But then there's some people who reject him because Jesus is offensive. And as a result of people neglecting Jesus, he's wondering if the people there will still follow him regardless of how they feel. But today, I want to talk about what is it to be a kingdom ambassador? What is an ambassador? What does it mean? Let's talk about it today. What does it mean to be an ambassador? An ambassador is a diplomatic official of the highest rank sent by a government or kingdom to represent it in a foreign land. Let me back it up again. An ambassador is a diplomatic official sent by the highest rank, sent by a government or kingdom to represent it in a foreign land. You are an ambassador. You have been handpicked and chosen by God's government to represent it in a foreign land. In other words, you are an exile. You are a stranger. You are not from here. You're a citizen of heaven, and this is foreign territory, and we're supposed to represent the kingdom of God everywhere we go. Tell the person next to you, I'm an ambassador. So today, I want to talk about three attributes when it comes to being an ambassador. Here's the first one. Ambassadors are chosen by God. Ambassadors are chosen by God. See, Earthly ambassadors are appointed by a king or president. They're not voted into office. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have a vote when it comes to an ambassador. The government handpicks that person to be an ambassador because they believe that person has a call to be an ambassador. The good news is, if you believe in Jesus, you have been chosen by God. It doesn't matter people's opinion. They didn't vote you in or out of office. In other words, someone can't take away the gift that God has given you. You are an ambassador chosen by God in order to make a difference. How do you know you're chosen by God because you're chosen by God? <laughs> How do you know that you got a call on your life because you got a call on your life? You are chosen. And when you get to the point and understand that you are an ambassador and God has given you an assignment to represent his country on earth, you will realize that you have purpose and a destination that nobody else can have. See, there's one thing in my life that I know. I'm not perfect. I'm not the best preacher, but he called me to this and I can't stop it because I'm chosen. How do you know you're chosen to do something that you got this whole idea of the I can't help it? I, I can't help it. I, I got to do what I do. God has called you to do something so big. You are chosen by God. And, no, and stop waiting for people to vote you into office. <laughs> We're waiting for somebody to tap us on the shoulder. But God already tapped you on the shoulder when he called you, and you are chosen by God to do something. We need to stop waiting and go get it. We are chosen by God. He says in verse 9, but you are a chosen people. 
He says, you're a chosen people. He's really recalling Exodus chapter 19 because in Exodus chapter 19, the children of Israel, you remember, they come out of bondage for 400 years. And now God is going to give them the law. He says that you're a kingdom of priests. Everybody was supposed to have direct access to God. But because of idolatry, it didn't happen. So now Peter is saying to the Gentiles, raise your hand if you're a Gentile. Everybody's hand should be up. You're not a Jew, are you? Amen. And so now he's saying that you are a chosen people. And you might be thinking this right now. Ken, you don't know my life. You don't know all the mistakes. I don't know enough Bible. I haven't been in church. Can I remind you that God specializes in choosing people who are not worthy? Moses killed a man, was a coward, ran to the backside of a desert, for 40 years, tending sheep with a man named Jethro. But he gets called by God to deliver millions of people out of Egypt. He, he was called by God not because he was so great, not because he came from the right family, not because he had the right pedigree. He was called by God because he was called by God. <laughs> he was called by God to show God's glory. In other words, if you feel inadequate, you're about to be called by God because God wants to get all the glory. You know the people who God can't use are the people who think they can do it in their own strength. See, a, a lot of us hesitate to do what God is calling us to do because we don't have all the money, we don't have all the resources, we don't think we can accomplish it. <laughs> and you got to understand that's where God comes in because he calls you to do stuff that you can't do, but he can do it. You are a chosen people. But we got to be careful because when God chooses us, we can be insecure. We can be arrogant. Insecurity is when I have a, a low view of myself and a high view of others. Arrogance is when I have a high view of myself and a low view of others. We got to get to the place where we have godly confidence, where I got a high view of me and a high view of you. And I'm not concerned about what you do. I'm concerned about what I do. And I know God's called me to do what I do. And I know God's called you to do what you do. So I don't have to be jealous of you because we're all moving forward in the kingdom of God. We are ambassadors chosen by God to do a specific assignment. In Exodus chapter 19, he, he calls Israel. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, he says, it, the reason I'm calling you is not because you're so great. It's because the nations around you are great, and you guys are so low that I'm going to choose you. Okay, let me back it up. He, he said, the reason I'm going to call you Israel is not because you're so great. It's actually because you're so low, you are in bondage for 400 years, so I'm going to call this nation to be a witness to the world. Oh, this is good because when you get to the point in your life where you feel so low and you feel so inadequate and you don't have everything you need, you are a perfect candidate for God to touch you and for God to use you for his glory. I think sometimes we're waiting for us to get ourselves together for God to use us. All you need to do is be available. All you need to do is want more out of life. You are chosen by God. You are handpicked and he selected you and nobody else voted you into office. It says that an ambassador, an earthly ambassador, is picked by the government to do something that nobody else can do, and they have privileges, not in their home country, but in a foreign territory. <laughs> in other words, our home country is heaven. But he's picked us to do something in a foreign nation in order to represent our home country. <laughs> Psalm 105, verse 43 it's talking about the children of Israel coming out of bondage. And it says, he brought us out, his people, with what? Rejoicing, his chosen ones with shouts of joy. It says, he brought us out with rejoicing, with shouts of joy. It says, he brought us out with rejoicing, his chosen ones with shouts of joy. Y'all didn't get it real quick. Let me do that. He, he brought us out with rejoicing, his chosen ones 
with shouts of joy. He, he brought us out with rejoicing, his chosen ones with shouts of joy. See, the people who shout, they're the ones that knew they were in bondage. The reason they shouted is because they were in bondage for 400 years and they knew they couldn't get themselves out and God got them out and the response was joy. The response was worship. The response was praise. I think sometimes a lot of us are waiting for someone to take us there when God's already taken you out and our response should be thanksgiving joyfulness and praise because he's brought us out. If you are still alive in COVID-19, he's brought you out and you don't need a man with a microphone to tell you you need to give him praise and rejoice because he's brought you out of some stuff. And the response should be praise. Oh, I'm committed to this because we want to be a word and a power church. A word and a power church. A word church is someone who used the Bible with integrity. And a power church is where you feel the Holy Spirit is moving. That's a perfect place to be. Some of us, we've been in a word church. The word went forth. It was awesome, but it was dry as toast. Now, some of us are coming from a power church where everybody's falling out, but you ain't getting no word. So you're dumb as rocks. Talk to me, somebody. No, we need to be a word and power church where the word goes forth with integrity and the Holy Spirit moves. But in order to do that, we got to be a people that rejoice and praise God, not because of the conditions that we have. That's just a part of our nature because we're chosen by God as an ambassador. It says he, he, he brought them out with rejoicing, his chosen ones with shouts of joy. You are chosen by God. Do you know the implication of that? Which means nobody can unchoose you because you're chosen by God. The question is, what are you chose to do? What has he called you to do? And I think sometimes, again, we're, we're waiting to be selected and handpicked. You're already selected. You're already handpicked. You are an ambassador. When an ambassador goes to another nation, an ambassador doesn't have to pay the bills. Okay. The government back home pays the bills. <laughs> when an ambassador goes to another nation, they don't have to worry about anything because they're sent on assignment. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying today. See, when you understand you are an ambassador, you will start going to sleep and stop worrying about paying the DTE bill. Because you know that you are ambassador and the government takes care of you. See, I am done living under the world system. My daddy takes care of me. I'm a citizen. I have rights and privileges in the kingdom of God. And I am an ambassador. I represent the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. So when I show up, the kingdom of God shows up. When I show up, God shows up. People are waiting for God. He's already here because I have the Holy Spirit inside of me. And what would it look like if living stones in this place came together and started worshiping God when you came through the door? But we're waiting for God and he's waiting for us. Because <laughs> we are an ambassador, which means we represent another place. <laughs> when an ambassador speaks, they can't speak their opinion. The only thing they can say is what's in the Constitution. <laughs> and, and that's the problem with us kingdom-minded folk right now. We know the word of God, but too often we start speaking our opinion. You need to speak the word over your life. God gives promises in his word. But he will answer prayer according to his word, not according to your word. But an ambassadors are, are chosen by God. Number two, ambassadors have direct access to God. A ambassadors have direct access to God. See, earthly ambassadors, they spend their time in the morning. Come here. This is very good. You know what earthly ambassadors do? They have direct access to the government. But before they go out, they have to have a briefing meeting in the morning. 
The reason they have to have a briefing meeting in the morning because they need to be an expert on foreign policy. <laughs> so before they head out for the day and do their tasks, they got to spend time in the morning having a briefing meeting because they are not part of the United States, they are in another country, so they got to hear back home to see what they're supposed to do in another territory. Too many of us are walking outside and doing things, but we didn't have a briefing meeting in the morning. You are supposed to be an expert on foreign policy, which means you got to get connected with heaven's government to figure out what you're supposed to do here. They spend most of their time gathering information with their home country. In verse 9, it says, you're a chosen people, but what? A royal priesthood. You are a priest, which means you talk to God, which means you hear from God. See, this is the thing. In the Old Testament, what happened? They had a priest through the lineage of the Levi tribe. Only certain people could talk to God. But then the whole priesthood became corrupt. And so when Jesus died on the cross, what happened in the temple? The whole veil got ripped from top to bottom, which meant there was a barrier between man and God. And now all of us have access to get to the Father. You have access with heaven's government. You don't have to wait for a preacher. You don't have to wait for someone to come from another place. You can talk to God any time that you want. And you and I need to have a briefing meeting in the morning. I, I said in the morning. Because you know what happens? We go through life, and then at the end of the day, God, what happened? Some things you need to pray about in the morning. You need to pray before you go into that job. <laughs> Don't pray after you go into that job. You need to pray before you go into business meetings. You need to have a briefing meeting, and you got access to God. I will pray for you but you got access to God. You don't have to wait for anybody. You have access to God. And one of the reasons we don't want to pray is because we compare our prayers to somebody else. As if they got more access than you. <clears throat> okay. All you have to do to pray to be effective is say his name. <laughs> All you have to say is in the name of Jesus. Ken has no power. But when I say in the name of Jesus, that has power. That gets God's attention. If you don't say his name, that's like putting the envelope in the mail without a stamp. It's going to return right back to you. But when you say his name, it will go places. <laughs> and you don't have to worry about anybody else. Don't worry if nobody else is praying for you. The Bible says the Holy Spirit prays for you. Jesus makes intercession for you. And if somebody, nobody else is praying, I'm here to tell you that God is praying for you. We have direct access to God. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12 says, In him we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Do you have confidence when you pray to God? Do, do you step into God's presence with boldness? I'm talking about not on your good day. I'm talking about on that bad day. You know that day where you don't want to step up in his presence, where you're scared to come up in there. Nobody even in your house, you're like, hey, God, are you there? You got to understand God's right here, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and you got to have access and boldness to come to the Father. I want you to think about your child on the day that they need you. On the day that they blew it and they made a mistake, as a good parent, what would you do? Would you turn your back on them or would you run to them? That's what God is doing in your life. He wants to run to you, but oftentimes we're running away from him. Ambassadors have direct access to God. <laughs> See, ambassadors, they live in a foreign country, but they have to keep in touch with the head of state back home. So they live in a foreign country. They're a citizen of the United States, but they might be in Germany. They, they might be there. They're not a citizen of Germany. They're a citizen of the United States, but they have to understand what's going on in their home country to be effective in another country. In other words, I got to pray to God to understand how I'm supposed to operate and what I'm supposed to do 
on earth everywhere I'm supposed to go. And I think sometimes this is the challenging part. Because when we talk about what is our purpose, what are we supposed to do, how are we supposed to go through life, we can just be going around and going to work and watching Netflix, Cobra Kai, doing all those different things, and then all of a sudden, we go back to sleep and we do the same thing. Because we don't have passion, we don't have purpose, because we're not connecting ourselves with the Father back at home. Can I just ask you a question? I'm not trying to get in your business. Over the last 30 days, what's your prayer life look like? It's quiet in this church. <laughs> what does your prayer life look like? Imagine an ambassador's job is to be an expert on foreign policy, and they never have a meeting back at home, but they're going through life trying to do their job. It's impossible. Every single day an ambassador wakes up, they have to have a briefing meeting to know what to do. You are an ambassador. You represent God on your job. You are an ambassador. You represent God in your relationships. You are an ambassador. You represent God in church. You are an ambassador. You represent God in the community. Wherever you go, you represent God. The kingdom of God is inside you, and we're supposed to represent him. Now, here's the good news, because an ambassador, not only do they keep in touch with the head of state, this is my favorite part, they got diplomatic immunity. Y'all missed it. Which means if they commit a crime <laughs> in another place, you can't touch them. Y'all not getting it. <laughs> diplomatic immunity means I'm a citizen of the United States. If I live in Germany and I commit a crime, Germany can't take me to jail. I might get shipped back home and the United States can reprimand me, but Germany can't reprimand me. I got some good news for somebody. You got diplomatic immunity. You are totally forgiven. And the only person that can deal with you is God the Father. The enemy can't do nothing with you because you got diplomatic immunity. It does not mean that when you go back to your foreign territory or back to the government that the hand of God won't whoop you a little bit. Because when an ambassador... When they commit treason and they do something they're not supposed to do and they get shipped back to the United States, it's like, don't worry about that, fellas, we'll handle it. <laughs> and that's what God does in our lives, right? Sometimes he handles situations because we weren't willing to handle it ourselves. Ambassadors have direct access to God. And an ambassador, not only do they have direct access to their government, they also have access to the nation's wealth. <laughs> they don't pay their bills, and if they need something, it is not up for them to go get it. All they have to do is make a phone call back home, and it's already theirs. Ugh. See, when you have a call from God, and God has chose you to do something, he has unlimited resources to make it happen, but you have to sometimes call back home so God can give you what you need. Oh, I can tell you a whole bunch of stories about my life or even this church. But when you're called by God to do it, he'll see you through it. When you're called by God to do something and God's called you to start that business, God's called you to do something so great, you don't have to worry about where the resources are going to come from. God will provide because a king takes care of his citizens. But you have to understand that you have to have direct access to God. So since we have direct access with God, the question is, what have we been doing with our direct access? Y'all all right? <laughs> because 7-Eleven is open 24-7. God's government is open 24-7. You have access with the Father, anytime you want, anytime you need it, he's listening. But in order for you to be effective in this next season, you are going to have to get in God's face. Because God is talking. 
God, God is revealing certain things to certain people in this time, but you will miss what God wants to do in your life if you're not connecting with God on a daily basis. You have direct access with God. And lastly, ambassadors are set apart for a purpose. <laughs> ambassadors are set apart for a purpose. Earthly ambassadors represent their home country in the way they act, respond, and handle foreign affairs. An ambassador understands that when they're in another country, when they're there, they are representing a whole nation. They understand that when they speak, it's as if the United States is speaking. They understand that the way that they behave, this is how the United States would behave. There should be a distinction and a difference. I don't know if you've ever been to an embassy, but if you go to an embassy, it doesn't matter if the land is in poverty. When you go to the embassy, it doesn't take on the customs of the host land. The embassy is supposed to reflect the homeland. In other words, everybody else in that territory can be living in dirt. <laughs> but they're supposed to exude the culture from the homeland. They eat the food from the homeland. They don't become a citizen of another nation because they're a citizen of the United States. They even dress like they're from the United States because they represent the home territory. What am I saying? No matter where you go, we are supposed to represent the kingdom of God in our actions, our behavior, how we talk, our distinctions. There should be a difference and people should notice it. And when people ask, what's the difference? You just tell them I'm an ambassador. I speak on behalf of another nation. It says in verse 9, it says, but you're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. A holy nation. That word holy means to be set apart. Ambassadors are set apart. They are different from everybody else in the host country. Ambassadors, all they do is quote from the Constitution because they have rights and privileges as a citizen. It says, a holy nation of people belonging to God. Who do you belong to? Come on, say it with some confidence. Who do you belong to? You belong to God. You are set apart. And so therefore, we should be conducting ourselves as if God has set us apart. Now, this is critical. Because in these moments right now, when the pressure is turned up, sometimes we act and respond like we don't belong to God. We act and respond like he hasn't done anything and we're not set apart. But it says that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous or wonderful light. So God called you out of darkness until his light. Darkness means ignorance. He called you out of ignorance into his light with knowledge. There was a time you were ignorant. Now God has called you out so you can be holy and be set apart. I told you last week, this, is, this just isn't church. This is the embassy. The embassy is a place where you come to learn how to be in another country. This is a place where you get knowledge to walk into your authority that God has called you to have. And it says in verse 10, it says, once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles. Are you reading this? He's saying you're a foreigner. You're an exile. You don't belong here. You are a citizen of heaven, and as a result, you can't take your cues from Fox News. You can't take your cues from CNN. You can't take your cues from what the world is telling you. You got to take your cues from what the word of God says. It says, now, this is what you're supposed to do, to abstain from sinful desires. Pastor, just go to verse 12. I'm going to stay right there. To abstain... <laughs> from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. <clears throat> He's saying, listen, 
Everybody else is going to want to turn up. Everybody else is going to do their thing. But you are a foreigner, you are a stranger. It doesn't mean that you won't want it, but you can't have it. It doesn't mean that you won't desire it, but you are not allowed to have it. Why? Because you are an ambassador. The question becomes now, if everybody else wants it and is getting it and you getting it too, it's probably because you're not a stranger, you belong here on earth. He says, you are a foreigner, a stranger. You got to live your life where things you used to like now becomes odd. Where jokes you used to laugh at, it's not funny no more. Places you used to go, you don't go anymore because you are a foreigner, you are a stranger, a citizen of God, and you represent him everywhere that you go. Anybody desire something sinful? Somebody lying? Okay, all right. All right, some of y'all want to lie today. Y'all lying in church. It says it wages against your soul. There's a war that's going on. How are you going to be victorious in a war? There are some wars that you don't need to engage in. See, the problem is so many of us are struggling back and forth. Look, I ain't, I ain't going to do nothing. I'm just going to go to the club, have one drink, two, five drinks, and uh, we're going to see what happens. I'm just going to sit right here. I'm a minister. <laughs> There's some places you just shouldn't go. You already know if you go and he smile at you because you like him as black as Wesley Snipes, it's over. Don't go. That fraternity party, don't go because you already know what's going to happen. I'm talking good right now. Abstain. In the same way, when you go on a fast, you're supposed to abstain from food. You're not supposed to touch it. It's the same way he's saying those sinful desires, don't eat it. Don't touch it. Don't come close to it. Because if you do, you're not strong enough in the faith. You're going to fail in the flesh. He says, you're a stranger. You're peculiar. You are not from here. And the indication is you abstain from things that you want. It does not mean that you don't want it, but you know it's not good for you. All right. Because the goal of an ambassador is to influence the government or influence the territory for his kingdom government. The goal of an ambassador is to now go to other places that are different than their homeland to influence that government, to have that government change policies even in their country. In other words, that means sometimes you need to go on your job and there's going to be someone who's struggling with unforgiveness. Your job is to influence them, preach the kingdom, and show them how they're supposed to conduct themselves as a kingdom citizen. You know, when I was a teacher, I got some of my students here, there was one place I knew not to go, the teacher's lounge. Because if I went there, I was going to be talking about my students, I was going to talk about how they were no good, I was going to be talking about administration and everybody else. I realized, and what happened? Then I started talking about people. Because birds of a feather, what? So I had to stop. Not our school, it was another school, all right? Because I got some of my students here. We didn't talk about y'all. Okay, five times I talked about you in five years. <laughs> but there were some places I knew that I could not go because I wasn't strong enough in the faith and I wasn't bold enough to speak up. Ugh. If you're not bold enough to speak up or strong enough in your faith, sometimes you need to take your lunch and just sit in the car for 30 minutes. Y'all better hear me. <laughs> Sometimes you need to just say, you know what, I'm not going to pick up the phone because I'm not strong enough. <laughs> There's some places I can't go anymore. There's certain things I cannot do because I'm a kingdom citizen and I represent God. We're closing right here. First Peter chapter 2, verse 12 from the message translation says this, live an exemplary life among the natives so that your actions will refute their prejudices. Then they will be won over to God's side and be there to join in the celebration when he arrives. He says, this is how you're supposed to operate and function. He says, live exemplary lives. So even people who say that there's something wrong with you, 
No, eventually they're going to start to celebrate when Jesus comes back because they saw your life. You got to understand that a lot of times, listen, Jesus is coming back. I do believe that. But before he comes back, people are going to be looking at you. (laughs) And we should be able to say like Paul, follow me as I follow Christ. And I don't know about you, but what God is waiting, he's waiting for us. And people are waiting for the church to step up. And the reason why now we're in this situation when it comes to who you're going to vote for, who you're going to vote for, and we got our hope in that is because we weren't ambassadors. It's because we slipped up. And the world has crept in. And as a result of that, we're putting our hope in something else. Listen to me. You should vote. You should get out there. But in actuality, if we don't change, nothing will change. If we don't change, nothing will change. If we don't change, nothing will change. I I was reading a quote by Barnabas Piper, and he said, you know, when you think about it in this election, he says, this is where you really feel like a foreigner and a stranger. Because you really shouldn't have a home with any political party, because if you do in this particular situation, you're not fully representing the kingdom of God. It's a reminder that our king is on the throne and our hope is in him. But what the enemy is doing in this season, he's trying to get the church to be divided. How can we expect the world to come together if the church is divided? Because what the enemy, listen, what he means for evil, God will turn it around for good. Listen, I don't don't care what you're facing today. I don't care what you're struggling with. You got to remember that you have authority, that you are a king. You are a queen who represents the most high. He's the king of kings, the Lord of lords, but he says you're a kingdom of priests, which means you have direct access to God anytime that you want. He says that, that you're a holy nation. You are set apart. Stop trying to fit in when he's called you to stand out because you're set apart. He says, I picked you up and I brought you in from out of darkness into his marvelous light. And ambassadors are chosen by God. They are not voted into office. Just say it. Just say it. I'm chosen by God. Say that right now. I'm chosen by God. You need to feel the weight of that. You didn't pick God. God chose you. God chose you. In your mess, in your sin, when you couldn't get right, he still chose you. It's one of those, I don't know many people that God chose when their life was perfect. He waited when I needed a savior. He waited when I needed help. And I didn't come to God. He came to me when I was low. He chose me. And in my low moments, when I feel like I can't get right, I'm reminded, you know, no, no, Ken, you are chosen for a purpose. And you have direct access to God. And in these moments, in these seasons, you're going to need that access. You're going to need to be connected with him. Would you stand on your feet for a few moments? Because this is what I know, what the enemy meant for evil. God will turn it for good. I I said that when you come into the house of God, sometimes there should be some joyfulness. There should be some celebration. There should be some excitement that goes on. I'm excited because I know God is going to turn everything around for my good, for his purpose. Would you just sing this song with us for a few minutes?